Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from this channel and in this video I'm going to discuss two topics overcommitment to sectors and ramming and I'll illustrate this with some gameplay in the tier 10 ME262 HG3. Here we are on the plateau map it's the Cursed Valley variant which is laid out in the five spots of a die configuration or a quincunx if you want to risk saying that in a YouTube video. There are three garrisons strung in a line and then two outlying command centers and by way of a reminder the garrisons confer three resources every five seconds, the command centers do that and call in bomber flights to attack enemy sectors, not neutral ones note. Clearly from a strategic point of view the command centers are most important, tactically the central garrison as the gateway to all other sectors is also important. And this is a bit of a tricky map for an ME262 HG3 because the only air defence heavies will be found at garrisons. There are none at the command centres, they're all light fighters. Depending on when you spawn, you're probably either going to go to the nearest command centre on the left and mix it with the air, uh, air defence fighters and hope that something like enemy bombers come across that you can shoot down. Potentially you could consider using your ordnance if you have it as well on your heavy. Alternatively, if you're on the rightmost spawn point, you can fly through the garrison on the right and then get to the enemy command centre and hope to interfere with their uh, capture of it, or perhaps even capture it yourself. If we look at the order of battle, we can see that I'm the only human in my team and opposing me is another ME262 HG3, and he's specialised, which means in theory he outclasses my aircraft and he's looking to do the same sorts of things that I will be looking to do. So I'm going to need a bit of luck in this battle. So, as we can see here, I've spawned in the, the, the rightmost of the spawns, which means I'm going to uh, do the second of the two options that I outlined in the strategy, strategy and tactics section. And that means I'm going to go to the garrison, see if I can shoot down a couple of uh, air defence heavies, or, uh, and then proceed to the command centre uh, at the far end of the map. And let's see how the battle develops. Now, as ever in my heavies, I don't believe in going low to use ordnance first. I believe in clearing out the top. So the first thing to do is gain altitude. And the first of the air defense heavies has already appeared. Now I see the second. I can see what pattern they're in. So I'm going to go for the, the left of the two. And then probably wheel around and see if I can shoot the right. As it happens, the left flies straight, so I continue to work him over and shoot him down. And by destroying both of the uh, air defence heavies, we have the garrison. So now I'm off to the command centre, which is only half captured at this point. I can already see a bomber. That's a target of interest to me. Looking on the minimap, there is an enemy aircraft way below me. I'm paying that no attention. So here we go on the bomber. I'm being joined by some of my teammates, and I find the, the enemy human heavy player, and I've got him at a disadvantage. And throughout this engagement, I display some of the worst shooting you're ever likely to see. Now, at this moment, the human player decides he still wants to try and shoot down the bomber, which is not a bad thing. But we're just going to stop it here, and we're going to discuss overcommitment to a sector. The human player currently has some help in here, so it's a bit of a marginal call as to what he should do. However, he's in a fix. He wants to shoot down the bombers, which he knows will flip this sector which he doesn't want to lose because it's the, the home command center, but he also knows that I've got behind him in my heavy. Tactically, this is a poor position for him, and there does come a moment when you can overcommit to a sector, and what do I mean by that? It means a number of things. Overcommitting to a sector occurs when you're trying to take a sector and the odds are against you. And the best that you can hope for is to delay the capture of the sector by the enemy. Now, towards the end of the game, that actually might be a, a tactically astute move. 
At the start of the game, like this, it's not. You're throwing away your aircraft. Another form of overcommitting to a sector, not this one, is to turn around and shoot down that last air defence aircraft to flip it to you when your teammates are in the sector and will do it very shortly and you could move off to another sector. And that's especially so when you're in high powered fast aircraft that can get to sectors quickly. So at high tiers, overcommitment becomes a, a more serious issue than it does at lower tiers where it will take you a while to get to another sector and it may actually be worth turning around. And the third form of overcommitment is to sit in a sector and defend it to, to the death when your team is losing all of the other sectors. So tactically, you need to be flexible. And some of the principles that I've outlined in earlier videos need to be understood as guidelines and not out and out rules. Because if you fall into the trap of overcommitment, you will likely suffer adverse consequences and probably lose the battle. And in my opinion, this is what uh, the player in the ME262 HG3 ahead of me is doing. He would probably be better flying off to another sector and leaving this one. Even though they're two, he's two sectors to one down, he could fly over the middle and try and capture it, or he could go to the enemy command center in such a fast aircraft. He chooses not to, and let's see what happens. Well, the first thing that happens is that I continue to shoot very badly, and that's because I was quite twitchy here. I wanted to get this player out. Um, you need to try and remain calm when you're shooting, especially with guns that are difficult to land. So we're going to dance around the sky for a little while until finally I start shooting a little bit better. Now, if this chap fe fellow in the uh, ME262HG has got his boost and he's built this aircraft for speed, he probably could get away from me quite easily. But he chose instead to break off to the bomber and he's given me an opportunity to shoot him down. And although I'm making a hash of it, let's not beat about the bush, eventually I take his invitation. And now he's down, we're in a position to perhaps take this sector, certainly delay its capture by the enemy. I fly away from the pursuing enemy aircraft. Notice there's a high flying aircraft above me and head for that. It's a bomber, meat and drink. Keeping an eye on what else is going on. And I come down. And by this time, the enemy 262 has returned to the fray in the hope of getting this sector under his control. And in theory, he has the advantage. I'm slightly damaged. He's got a completely fresh aircraft. We're going head on. So in theory, if we're both using gun sights, and I assume we are, he should do at least as much damage to me as I should to him. And then it becomes a game of chicken. Who's going to pull out and potentially give the enemy aircraft an advantage? Well, it won't surprise you to learn that neither of us pull out. And here's the surprising result. Or is it a surprise? Let me explain. I've destroyed the enemy aircraft with a ram, even though I was in a lower health configuration than he was when we began the engagement. How does that work? Well, a little bit of history is required here. Originally, in the version one, early version one iterations of this game, ramming did what probably intuitively everybody would expect, destroys both aircraft outright, no questions asked. This apparently wasn't very sat satisfactory to the players of version 1 and the World of Warplanes team decided to introduce a different Rami mechanic whereby RNG or luck plays a part. Now nobody really knows how um, ramming in this game works anymore but probably it's a little bit like World of Tanks where if you have a heavier vehicle you've got more speed and you've got more health you're more likely to come out of a situation uh, a ramming situation alive uh, than your opponent. 
Well, as I said right at the start of this engagement, I was on lower health than my enemy, and I assume he was shooting as accurately as I was, so in theory, a ram should have favoured him. Now, he might have lost his aircraft, but in theory, he should have come out of this, uh, uh, had a higher chance of coming out of this alive than I did. And you can see exactly the opposite has happened. There are lots of theories as to how you can optimise your ramming, and my favourite is what I did here. I very slightly lifted my nose at the, just before the moment of impact and effectively got my enemy to run into the underside of my aircraft. Now I can't prove it and there are certainly people who will argue exactly the opposite manoeuvre is a better one, but I feel if you can get a ramming aircraft to go into the bottom of your aircraft then you've got a significantly better chance of surviving the ram. And this is not proof, but as you can see I won the ram. So there I've discussed at the start of this battle both overcommitment to sectors and ramming, which were the main topics of the video. So if you're here for discussion of those two topics, look away now. Otherwise, we'll just continue to talk through the battle, as I do normally, and I hope you enjoy it. And with those two pieces of luck, firstly happening upon the enemy heavy uh, in an advantageous situation for myself, even though I did my best to make a mess of it, and then winning a ram that probably I, most people would have expected I would lose, I managed to set up the capture of the command centre and now my team is in a good position. Of course I'm now very keenly aware that the enemy heavy, if he catches me unawares, will be in a much better position to deal with me than he has been previously. But that's not going to discourage me from doing my primary task of keeping the tops of sectors safe. And as you can see, I'm about to destroy the bomber over this command centre. Now we're two sectors um, to two at this moment, but we have a command centre. And pretty much what I was thinking here was I was going to stay here and defend this command centre for as long as I could. And once I was destroyed, I would go along and try and take our command centre. But as ever, my team suddenly pulls its the two sectors out of uh, the hat very quickly and we're four sectors to one up and already I've got a Maguire's medal as well which is 400 capture points in a single sortie for heavy so I continue to defend this sector now the ME262 HG3 used to be an aircraft I loathed mightily however I'm beginning to come round to its charms I'm finally being, being effective with the guns and now that I've got it reasonably fast, even though it's not specialised, and there's a lot more to come in that regard, I feel much more comfortable in it. Certainly I prefer this aircraft to the FW252 that you've seen me flying recently if you've been watching my earlier videos. Now I've just touched on the subject of builds, and as far as this aircraft is concerned, I should think most people would know that uh, a speed build is the one to um, go for. However, I tend to blend my speed builds with a little bit of manoeuvrability. This aircraft is up against the XF-90, which is never going to match in speed unless that aircraft is unspecialised. And also the Javelin, another very fast aircraft. So typically, whilst I will concentrate on building for speed, I will also put a lightweight power unit on my uh, ME262 HG3 when I have the opportunity because that will give me the edge on any player in a heavy who decides to get into a turn fight with me. It won't necessarily happen very often and good players will avoid it if they're in the XF90 or the Javelin but for other situations it's a useful asset. And as you can see I've continued to stay in this sector now this isn't overcommitment. my team is winning easily, I don't have to worry about flying off to other sectors to make sure that we have what we need to win the game. I can continue to shoot down any intruding aircraft in this sector, safe in the knowledge that I'm not being tactically silly and that we're in a good position to win. And as we get air supremacy, I finally do decide to depart the sector in search of the final bits of damage. I've already got a winged legend. I saw one other medal going through earlier. This has been a satisfactory game. I gamble on the TA183 not using its greater manoeuvrability, even though that's limited, to attack me. 
and then I dove away from the attacking enemy aircraft behind me. So as we can see the Maguires and the Winged Legend and the Hero of the Sky Badge went through and quite a nice haul of personal points. So let's have a look at the battle result. And as we can see it's a 5 chevron battle which is the best result for a heavy fighter grade 1. 142,179 credits gross, that's with a premium account bonus and that means bonuses will apply to these two items. If we have a quick look at the message box we can see that there was no there were no expenses because the aircraft wasn't shot down and I used prepaid consumables. Combat experience of 8,160 with bonuses applied, premium account and a times two victory, first victory of the day. 408 free XP with a premium account bonus and two tokens. Uh, that's for the Maguire medal and the Hero of the Sky. There's also a Winged Legend there as you can see but I'd earned um, the token for that in a previous game. Looking at the personal score, if we look at the class specific missions, we can see that two of them aren't actually complete, and nonetheless, there was enough done to obtain the five chevrons. 16,250 personal points, two sectors captured, 14 aerial targets destroyed, a rather handsome 14,348 damage to aerial targets, 24 critical hits, and 580 capture points, and that was divided this way. 240 for defending sectors and 340 for attacking sectors. And we pop along to this team score tab. We see that's enough for first place. Uh, the rest of the team were bots. And on the opposition side, I would imagine that uh, the enemy ME262HG3 pilot was rather discouraged by his bad luck at the start of the game. So there you have it. In this video, I discussed the concept of overcommitting to sectors and why it's a bad thing. I discussed ramming, a little bit about its history and how you might be able to make it work in your favour a little bit more. And I also discussed uh, potential builds for the ME262 HG3. Well, at least to a, a certain extent. I hope th you found those comments useful. And if you did, I hope you'll come back and see more of my content in the future. But until then, this is Royal Flying Corps, signing out.